It's loving to talk to entrepreneurs and sometimes we talk to, as you know, people who help entrepreneurs and I am really excited today because we have, uh, excuse me, I was going to read the wrong name, Mimi Goss, uh, author, professor, uh, woman or person of the world, author of What is Your One Sentence? Hi Mimi. Hello Jeffrey. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank you Mimi. Why don't you first tell our listeners who Mimi Goss is? Oh my goodness, nobody's asked me that. I, I am. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I am an entrepreneur. I have, uh, we have my company and we help people identify and best communicate their messages. And I teach at Harvard. I've taught at Harvard for a long time, mostly at the Kennedy School. Right. And I live in the Boston area. I live in East Boston on the harbor. And I grew up in New Jersey outside Manhattan and went to Concordia, where you went to school. Yes, I did. We were both Co Concordia alumni. We met at a Concordia event at Harvard a few weeks ago. And I really liked your talk at that time about your book. Uh, Thank you. I, I really, it really resonated with me and what I've done in my career. So why don't we tell people about your book and what's the message behind it? My book is called What is Your One Sentence? How to Be Heard in the Age of Short Attention Spans. And it was published by Penguin just a year ago. Are you listening, Steve? <laughs> yes, I, I don't get to bring attention. So good. He's already lost his attention. Good, okay. Good, good morning, Stephen. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you, too. <laughs> so what's the message behind the message? The message is that people are busy, and we don't have a lot of time to hear other people's messages, or even our own messages. And most people have too much information in their heads, and they have too much information in their inboxes, in their emails. And what I found with students and clients is that they could give me a 95-page report, and I go, I read your 95 pages, but I have no idea what you want me to tell the person in the next room. What is your one sentence? And it was a thing that I kept repeating to people, what is your one sentence? And it, I think because it's simple, people can focus on it. And as a, I'm a former reporter, and as a reporter I learned, if you didn't know your one sentence, you didn't know your story. It has to be your lead in a hard news story. It has to be your angle in a feature story. In um, advertising, as you know, it's called pitch. Right. So your one sentence is what you need in any or USP in business, unique selling proposition. Yes. A one sentence. Yes. You have to boil your business down to one sentence. What is the compelling statement? that will really influence people to want to do business with you. Yes. How is it new? How is it different? And why should they care? Right. Well, you know, uh, just to support what you're saying, I have a good friend, Terry Patinkin, Dr. Patinkin, and I was wondering if I had, a, you know, if I was getting Alzheimer's a couple of years ago, and I asked him, and he did a cognitive test on me, and he said, aside from the normal problems I've had my whole life, I have no, I do not have Alzheimer's. And what he said to me was, you process me, but he means me and other people like you, that I process and we process more information in a month than our grandfathers did in their whole lifetime. And I don't think people realize how many messages are being, we being pounded with every minute of every day and how much our brain can take in. And since we're cluttered with all that stuff, sort of like a Star Wars light factory coming right at your face, how do you get that one message to register? And I think that's what you're saying. You found the formula that's telling people, follow this formula and yours will be the message that will clear out the clutter, correct? Yes, and what I found is I analyzed a lot of memorable one sentences. Like, um, I'll just give you some examples. I'll give you some examples from business. The customer is always right. That was Harry Gordon Selfridge, which uh, PBS is yes. doing this wonderful yes. series on Mr. called Mr. Selfridge. And he was an American entrepreneur, and he launched Selfridges in London, and it became this huge department store. The nice store. The, yes, it's a beautiful store. The customer is always right. He also said, the boss, let's see, the boss says go, the leader says let's go. So we had this whole team idea about business, which I think is wonderful. It's quite an empowering.